Hey guys, Mike here. Um, is to watch this video for Thursday, September 1st. Um, I realize it was another slow day in chat. Uh, look at the market, the Dow, or I'm, I'm sorry, the SPY, another red day. The Dow was down like 280 is what I was going to say. So we're kind of bleeding lower. Um, you can't see it on this chart, but the 200 day is literally right here. So we did this really, really slow climb, bumped our head on the 200 day on the SPY, right? And then, and then kind of Rolled around a little bit, gap down, looked like we were bouncing, and then kind of the bottom fell out. So um, it definitely feels weak out there. Um, you know, somebody asked me, what do you do when the markets were really, really weak, right? When it's kind of almost in crash mode, think 2008, 2009, stuff like that. Um, you know, do you start shorting? And my answer is no. Uh, and the one good thing about it is if you look at the market, and you could go back years and years, when the market's weak, it happens pretty darn quickly. Right. I mean, like, look at this th right here. This happened over the course of less than two weeks. Right. And then it takes what, like almost a month to get back up there. They always say what stairs up, elevator down. Um, and so even when the market's kind of ugly like this, you get some really nice snapback bounces. Um, and the beauty of what I do is if the market's just really weak and then the next day gap down week again and week again, um, very little, if any, of my setups will trigger, right? So you spend a lot of time doing nothing. And you still, even today, I'll give you an example for those that didn't make it to chat. Um, even today on a slow day, this MEGL took off like crazy, then came back around, uh, like pulled back, and I called a second mouse through uh, 750, which it broke 750 here, went to 767. And you can see what happened when it broke 750. Uh, whoops, pretty quickly to 880. Uh, so even in a weak market and the SPY, I'll go back to the SPY and show you five minute candles, um, a slow grind down all day. Look at that close, by the way. Um, you know, a slow grind down all day. There's still opportunities out there. You, I just, I'm not trading as much. I'm not making as many trades. So um, I would, you know, highly emphasize it's time to exercise patience. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, and don't force trades. If there's not a trade, you know, I always say if there's nothing to trade, trade nothing. Um, but there are still things to trade. So anyway, what are we watching for tomorrow? Let's go into that. N-U-W-E, which was 60-something cents yesterday. I don't love stocks in this price range. And it closed well off its highs. But 170 million shares traded. It sounded like a nice headline. Um, we're going to watch that one tomorrow and probably the next few days. I never did take a trade in today, even though it was on the gap playlist. Phase, um, F-A-Z-E, had a big rip yesterday, but it happened in pre-market. So then it opened up here and kind of tanked. And then today um, was on the gap playlist again. And by the way, was my number one watch for the opening few minutes, see, right? Because it opened here, sold off a bit. I loved it back through 20. So it was one of my number one. I was actually staring at this and something else. Um, and it didn't matter because it never came close to 20. Did kind of curl up at the end of the day, though. So you had the gap up yesterday then the gap up today more narrow range today um pretty decent rally near the close so this one and because it can move really nicely this one um absolutely goes on watch for tomorrow all right um m-e-g-l i talked about that one already you can't really see it because everything's so compacted because it ran to 249 its second day of trading not that it should have um but then that the bottom fell out and then it's been trading sideways but if you go to 15 minute candles, you can kind of see how nice that move was. Um, so we definitely want to keep M-E-G-L on watch. M-G-A-M. I don't love this one because um, I would like today to have been kind of a quiet inside day and look for a third day play, but it closed near yesterday's lows after that big rip yesterday. So you kind of have a bag holder situation from the last two days now. Um, but because it did make such a nice move yesterday and there's not that much to watch, I am going to put it on a chart. D-R-U-G, um, recent high flyer. Now you're like one, two, three, four red days in a row. Hit the 20-day uh, moving average today. And I like the fact that it topped out at 203. I was going to take this long back through two after the gap down, right? As the gap down bounce plate set up with the high of day only three cents above there and never triggered, right? Um, but it's still interesting to me for a potential bounce play. Uh, what's next? Let's see. That's drug Jay-Z. Um, Ended up giving a setup today, but I didn't see it, right? Look at this. It was, you know, it's on bounce watch. It's a goofy looking chart, but there's the opening candle. So you did have a gap down, sell off, and then it, the opening candle topped out at 647. And so back over that made sense to me. I just didn't see it. And from 648, 
went to pretty quickly to 765. That would have been a neat little trade. You actually had a halt in there somewhere too, volatility halt. Um, but I didn't get it. And then look what happened. It just rolled over, hit new lows for the day again. So what am I going to do? I didn't get my afternoon high of day break that I would have preferred. Um, so what am I going to do again? I'm just going to put it right back on bounce watch, right? Uh, I typed that wrong, wrong. GCT, um, this thing came public here, then ripped the next day and has been bleeding lower ever since. It's almost round tripped. Um, but I am still going to put this one right back on bounce watch. No setups in it today. NEPT, a uh, very narrow range right at the 20 day, recent high flyer. Um, so this one goes back on bounce watch, no trades in it today. So it goes back on bounce watch. This is um, an ugly chart, but I'm looking just for a possible snapback bounce. I mean, we've fallen from 29 down to 15, and I should say really 27 down to 15 in four sessions straight, just straight down. Um, so I'm just looking for a snapback bounce setup, certainly not bullish on the chart, but as a trader, we might get a nice trade in that tomorrow if we get a, a bounce play setup. CFVI, I like this chart. You had the big rip, quiet inside day, another inside day, but closed green. So you kind of look at this as coiled, possibly for another rip. Um, that's the merger stock with uh, da -da -da Rumble, right? YouTube competitor. Um, and holding up pretty well after the big breakout three sessions ago. GRNQ, I believe somebody online decided this was a sympathy um, to, I got to remember the symbol. If you didn't see this, I got to share this with you. Someone decided this was somehow a sympathy to ATXG. I got to share this one with you if you didn't see this one today. ATXG. This actually happened. Um, it went from a low of $12.95 to $656 on half a million shares. And there it is, you, just, you know, you kept getting the halts. Um, I actually know a guy who bought five shares in the 60s. And I emailed him. I said, I'm dying to know how you ended up. Um, by the way, in after hours, this ended up over a thousand. So imagine <laughs> having five shares and still maybe making $900 a share on that. Um, that's pretty impressive, right? I, you know, I don't know what he made. I, I can't wait to find out. But anyway, um, so somebody decided, let me get back to the watch list. Somebody decided GRNQ. Um, was a sympathy uh, to that ATXG. And by the way, since I'm talking about it, SHPH also uh, went public today and went from 1360 to 8470. So it's just stupid out there. Um, I heard Wayne in After Hours, or maybe it was still the market, basically telling people, when you see stuff like this, if it's giving you any kind of FOMO <laughs> or it's making you chase something else thinking that one's going to be the next... Take these off charts, right? Don't even look at them. And I thought that was great advice, right? Because this just doesn't happen. And then when it does, um, you know, maybe maybe three people on the planet got the majority of that move. Most people just sat there with a dumb look on their face like I had watching it happen, right? Because you don't want to chase. Anyway, let me get back to GRNQ. Um, it held up pretty well. So I definitely think it's worth watching again tomorrow. And then lastly, I'm going to throw AVYA on watch. I'll zoom in a little bit. You can get a better look here. Had nice volume back here and uh, topped out at $1.65. Both of these days hit $1.65 and is now kind of flagging after this run. You kind of have a flag going on. So possible breakout to the upside, maybe over that $1.65 tomorrow. I've babbled long enough. I'll see you all in the chat room in the morning. Have a good night.